we are still uh, factoring expressions, uh, uh, the opposite of expanding if you like, uh, so we're putting it in the brackets. And so far we have uh, dealt with these questions uh, and every time we approach a question like this, you should ask yourself these questions also in this order. Is there a common factor? Can I factorize it by grouping? Is it normal factoring? And now we're going to do extra normal factoring. And what is the difference between extra normal factoring and normal factoring? It's that the coefficient of your x squared, it's not a 1. It's a 2 or 3 or a minus 7 or whatever it is, it's not a 1. And you can't get rid of that coefficient by taking out a common factor. Yeah? So this is what we call extra normal factoring. Or no, that's what I call it. Uh, it's not an official term. You just have to do one thing extra. And my experience is that students, and actually myself included, uh, because I'm a student myself, um, we don't like this one. Yeah, this is the one we like the least of all the different types of factoring. Uh, but hey, some things in life perhaps you like a little bit less. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? So don't feel uh, frustrated or angry, yeah? Just work twice as hard. All right, so an example question. 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. And we have to factorize this expression completely and put it in the brackets. Okay, is there a common factor? No, yeah, because sometimes you can get rid of the 3 like that and then it's just a normal factoring question. But there is it. Is it grouping? No, because it doesn't have four terms. Is it normal factoring? No, almost. But there is a three there. So it is the extra normal factoring. Okay. This is how you approach it. There are several ways of doing this. Yeah, This is what I always teach my kids. Um, at the end, you will still have, like normal factoring, two sets of brackets there. Okay. But you have to do something extra, hence the extra normal factoring term I give it. I'm going to dissect two of my terms. My first one, the x squared term, and I'm going to dissect my last term, the, the constant, yeah, the number. Okay. What do I mean with dissecting? 3x squared. I'm asking myself, what times what is 3x squared? And that is only 3x times x. So I'm dissecting it. I'm splitting it up, if you like. Okay? 3x times x is 3x squared. And that is actually the only possibility. If that would be 4x squared, for instance, yeah, then this could be 2x, 2x, because 2x times 2x is 4x squared, or it could be 4x, x, because 4x times x is also 4x squared. Are you following me? It's not 4x squared now, but I'm just saying, if it is, you have more uh, combinations possible, yeah? But for 3x squared, I only have one possible combination, 3x times x. Okay, I do the same for the number 4. What times what is 4? Well, for instance, uh, 4 times 1 is 4, okay? But also, 1 times 4 is 4, I could turn it around, and 2 times 2 is also 4, okay? And, but I'm gonna start somewhere. So I'm gonna start with 4 and 1, uh, because this is what I have to do now. I'm trying to crack the code, which means that I am going to cross multiply it now. 3x times 1 is 3x, let me write that down here. And x times 4 is a 4x, and that then, 7x, should be your middle term. Well, is it my middle term? No, it's not, okay? No, nothing wrong, no worries, you're not doing anything wrong. Uh, you just didn't find the correct co yeah, code yet. So I'm going to continue. 3x, x, and let me just turn it around. 1 times 4 is also 4. I'm going to do the same thing. 3x times 4, so that is 12x. And x times 1, yeah, is x, and that together is 13x. And is that my middle term? No, it's not, okay? Now, if you have more experience doing this, uh, you would not have chosen this one because you already would have seen that 3x times 4 is 12x. You're never going to get that 8x because we're trying to get that middle term, the 8x. Okay, we just have to continue, yeah? We have to be perseverant because what times what else is 4? 2 times 2 is 4. Yeah, and I continue, cross multiply. So 3x times 2, that is 6x, and x times 2 is 2x, and that is indeed 8x. That's my middle term. I have cracked the code. The vault is opening now, if you like. Um, just one final step now. So what goes inside those brackets? Now be careful here. So this is what I'm interested in. This is just some scrap paper. I go not diagonally, I go now horizontally. So 3x plus 2, and in the other set of brackets, x 
plus 2. And if I quickly check my work, 3x times x is 3x squared. 6x plus 2x is 8x. 2 times 2 is 4. All right. Now, if you are lucky, you started with this combination, you had it in one go. If you are lucky, yeah? Fantastic. If you're unlucky, like I was, well, I did it deliberately, but okay. If you're unlucky, it takes you, in this case, three turns before you find it, yeah? Don't get frustrated when it takes you a couple of turns, okay? Just continue. This is the way to do it when you have to do the special or extra normal factoring. Okay, so we are going to solve this question now together. 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, yeah? 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. And every time I ask myself the question, is there a common factor? No. Is it grouping? No. Is it normal factoring? No. So it is special, uh, or the extra normal factoring. Yeah, those are the questions, so make sure you've seen my previous videos, because then it all makes sense. And if you ask yourself these questions every time, it goes quicker, 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 and quicker, and you will be a superstar in factoring, and it doesn't trouble you. Extra normal. So, I have to find a combination. What? Sorry, not 2x, John. It is 2x squared. Silly me, sorry about that. There is a square over there, eh? Okay, continue. Uh, find the combination. So, what times what is 2x squared? Well, that's only 2x times x. Oh, hang on a minute. What times what is 1? Well, only 1 times 1 is going to be 1. 2x, let me just check that. But I think this is the only possible combination. Plus x equals, indeed, 3x. Yeah, so then I go horizontally for uh, when I put it in my brackets, 2x plus 1 and x plus 1, yeah, so that is my answer. 2x squared, 2x plus x, 3x, 1 times 1 is 1. Fantastic, well, that was actually not that hard, was it? Yeah, this is the one I don't like, really like, but you do get them on exams, yeah, so if you don't like something, doesn't mean you don't do it, yeah, just... You know, you pretend to be smiling rather than actually smiling, yeah? Anyway, that is it. We have only one left, the difference of two squares, and that's the one you will see uh, on loads of occasions. Uh, but before we do, I have some more example questions for the extra normal factoring, yeah? See you at my next video. Oh yeah, you can go to my site, eh? explainingmaths.com. Ask me a question, and I'll make a video like this one, especially for you, all for free, don't worry about that. Happy to help you, see you later.